Final Cut Pro 10 is not an update to Apple's popular editing suite. It's a complete rewrite. Much has been improved, but many features have also been lost. So let's take a brief look at a few of the main differences between version 7 and 10. First off, a very useful improvement. You no longer have to wait for your clips to import before you can start using them in your project. Final Cut will read the data straight from the camera, letting you get on with your work. Once the footage has been properly imported, Final Cut will then invisibly relink your media to the files now on your hard drive. Your clips still show up in the browser, just like they did before. What's different is the way you organise them. In all previous versions, you created folders called bins and dragged clips into them. You could also make subclips, shorter sections of particular clips, to further organise your media and make it easy to focus on just the parts you wanted to use. Version 10 introduces the powerful new concept of keywords. Add one to a clip or part of a clip and it'll be organised for you in a keyword collection. Label another clip and that one will be sent to the same collection without you having to do anything else. It's a much more powerful system. But what's happened to the viewer window? Version 7 had two windows, one to edit clips, the other to preview the timeline. These functions have been merged in version 10. Mouse over a clip in the browser to preview it. The same thing happens when you skim through your project in the timeline. So where are all the tools from the viewer window? Most of them are still there in the inspector section. The video tab contains most tools from the viewer's motion tab. Some are missing and a couple of new ones have been added as well. And if you were used to getting to composite modes by control clicking on a clip, you'll have to remember to access them from the inspector from now on. As before, you can keyframe most parameters, but there's been a significant change. In the previous version, you could add a keyframe, move the playhead to another point, alter the parameter, and another keyframe would have been added for you automatically. Now you have to add a keyframe before you change a value, whether one already exists or not, which isn't as efficient as it used to be. And generators? They're still there, but don't bother looking for bars and tones. Those have gone. Time remapping is much simpler in version 10. That obscure graph with speed measured by how steep the curve was, up for faster and down for going backwards in time, is now history. Now everything is done in the timeline with simple menus. You can even select a portion of your clip and drag its handle to speed it up or slow it down. Colour correction has completely changed too. In the past you had access to three colour wheels to affect different parts of your image. Now there's a colour board, broken down into colour, saturation and exposure. The video scopes are much better and they now display properly while playing back your project. On the downside, a crucial function, which showed you if your clip was within broadcast range by displaying green or red zebras, is no longer available. Audio meters used to be here, but now they're here. You can also see the audio waveform straight from the timeline, but what's even better is that altering the volume changes the waveform and you can now see at a glance which parts are peaking. Anything red is too loud. Transitions can now be accessed via the toolbar instead of through the menu bar or this tab in the old browser window. However, there's no way to save customised transitions or effects as favourites for you to use in other parts of your projects, or other projects for that matter. Unlike version 7, you have quick access to any music or photos on your Mac via these two buttons. And as before, you can also drag any file from the finder straight onto your timeline. Speaking of the timeline, that's going to take a lot of getting used to. It's so different it bears no resemblance to the original. Some changes are obviously good, like never having to worry about a clip's audio track. Drag the video and the sound always comes with it, unless of course you don't want it to. If you've added a second audio track to that clip, it too will be moved along without you having to do anything. Trimming a clip in version 7 used to be a chore. If you shortened it, you'd be left with a gap that you'd have to close. And if you had to lengthen a clip, you'd have to move everything to the right of it further along in the timeline to give you enough space. Now you just move your cursor to one side of the edit point and drag to alter the clip and everything else moves along accordingly. In version 10, your first video layer is called the primary storyline and you can't have gaps within it. Try and drag a clip away and this happens. That means that if you're used to working like this, you're going to have a hard time adjusting to this new way of editing. You can add a slug to create a gap with this command, but that's a long way from the flexibility that most editors are used to. The concept of layers is gone, 
and every clip above the primary storyline is linked to a clip within the storyline with this little bar. That means that if you move the bottom clip, the top clip moves with it, which again is not what you'd expect if you're a veteran Final Cut user. Lastly, it used to be easy to mute an entire audio layer or hide a video layer. You could do it with just a click. Since there are no layers, this feature is gone. But you can disable any clip like this, although this does have to be done for each individual clip. And locking layers to avoid altering them by mistake, that too is gone. As you can see, Final Cut Pro 10 is a radical new app, which greatly improves the editing process in some ways and removes flexibility in others. This is Apple's vision of our video editing future, and it may take some people a while to get used to it.